In this video, I'll demonstrate how to easily enhance player mechanics for your platformer. The jumping mechanic is crucial for any platformer. It can make or break the feel of your game. Let's explore how to polish a basic jump mechanic, improving its feel and giving your player better control. Here in our player script, I have some basic movement variables. I am getting a reference to the player animated sprite 2D. This is simply for playing animations. Here in the physics process, I am calling the handle gravity and handle jump functions. I am getting the input vector from the player. I am calling the handle move function to update the character's movement. And I'm updating the facing direction of the player when they move left to right. And finally, I'm calling move and slide. In the handle move function, I am moving the character and handling which animations to play. If the input vector dot x does not equal zero, that means the player is moving left or right. We will then apply acceleration to the player's movement. If the player is on the floor, we're going to play the run animation. Otherwise, if the velocity dot y is greater than 10, that means our player is falling, so we're going to play the fall animation. And if it's not greater than 10, that means the player is actually going up, so we're going to play the jump animation. If the input vector dot x equals zero and the player is not on the floor, that means the player is in the air, so we're going to apply air resistance. And the same thing, we're going to see if the player is moving up or down. If the player is moving down, we will play the fall animation, and if the player is moving up, we'll play the jump animation. And then here we will apply air resistance to the player's movement. And finally, if the player is not moving left or right, and the player is on the floor, then we play the idle animation. The update facing direction is pretty straightforward. It is just checking which direction the player is moving, and it is either flipping the sprite or not flipping the sprite. The handle gravity function is just checking to see if the player is not on the floor, and if that's true, then it's going to apply gravity. And finally, our basic handle jump function is just checking to see if the jump key was pressed and that the player is on the floor. And if those are true, it's going to apply jump velocity to the player. This player script results in a player that can move left and right while playing animations and jump and fall. But no matter how hard I press the key, or how repeatedly I press it, our player only jumps once and always jumps to the same height no matter what. That is not what we want, so let's see how we can adjust this. There's three easy things we can do to our player script to make our players jump more dynamic. For instance, when we press the jump key, whether we let off right away or we hold it down, the player jumps to the same height. And that's not what we want. We want it that if the player quickly pushes the jump key and releases right away, that the character only jumps a little bit. So let's go down to the bottom and let's add this new function called handle short jump. What this is checking is that the player just released the jump key, it is checking the character's velocity of y. And if it's less than the typical jump velocity divided by three, then we're gonna shorten the jump. If you wanna play around with the height of the short jump velocity, you can just adjust these two numbers, also your jump velocity, to get the right feel that you're going for. The last thing we need to do is take this function and we need to come up here in our physics process. So that is called every frame. So now let's see how this works. Let's run this again. Now you can see if we push and hold, our jump works still as we expect, but if we quickly just tap the jump key, we got a nice short jump. And then again, hold it, and then just quickly press it. Now the next thing we're gonna wanna add is a double jump. So for that, we're gonna start up here. We're gonna add a variable to check if the player is allowed to double jump. The reason we're doing this is we wouldn't want the player to just be able to double jump infinitely and just pretty much fly around the screen. So we're gonna start with the can jump variable as true. Like before, we need to call our function in the physics process. And then we're going to come to the bottom, handle double jump function here. So what our handle double jump function is doing is it's first checking to see if the player can double jump. And then it's checking to see if the jump key was pressed. And then it's checking to make sure the player is not on the floor. It's going to set the double jump to false. And then it's going to multiply our jump velocity times 1.1, thus adding a little bit of extra velocity to our jump. And like before, you can play with this number to get the right feel for what you're going for. The last thing we need to do is we need to reset our can jump to true. And a safe place to do that would be when we go back to the idle. So if we're going back to the idle, that means the player has landed on the ground again. So we can simply say can double jump. And then we can save that. Let's run this. So now we can still hold it and jump like normal. We can quickly tap it and short jump. And then if we jump and then jump again, we can double jump. And like I said, you can play with those numbers to get the right height and feel you're going for we still can't quite reach this platform. The last thing I think would be great to add to this character would be a wall jump. So this is gonna work similar to our double jump. We're gonna start by adding a check to make sure the player can wall jump, because likewise, you wouldn't want them to be able to Spider-Man up the wall. In our physics process, we wanna call the wall jump function, handle wall jump, and then let's go down to the bottom, and then we will add our handle wall jump down here. So let's go through this one. 
Again, we're checking to see if the player can wall jump. We're checking to see if the jump key was pressed. And then we're checking to see if the player is on the wall only. There's a similar function that's is on wall, but that would be triggered if you were a character and you walked up to the wall where you'd be touching the ground and the wall at the same time. So we want to make sure we call is on wall only. Next, we're getting the position of the wall that the player touched. We're checking to see if that vector 2 exists. We're setting the can wall jump to false. And then we're taking the position that we touched on the wall. We're taking just the x coordinate of it and we're multiplying it times wall speed. In case you didn't catch it at the top, I defined a variable wall speed for a float and I set it to 300. So this is just going to be how far off the wall you jump. And then similar to double jump, we're taking the jump velocity and multiplying that times 1.1. We are doing this so that as they jump off the wall, they have an upward trajectory instead of just shooting sideways across. And the last thing we need to do is like we did for double jump, we need to come in to when the player is on the ground again and idling, and we're going to reset the Ken wall jump back to true. So now let's run this and let's see our final product. And it looks like everything's working. We can double jump, we can short jump, and we can wall jump. Well, I suppose.